G'day, I'm Daryl Beatty and a former Grand Prix racer and now owner of Daryl Beatty Adventures. We use the Iveco Euro Cargo on our tours around Australia. Welcome to the Iveco Daily 4x4 induction video. This video is intended to help you familiarise yourself with all the features of the new daily. Joel Reid is my name from Iveco Trucks Australia and today the two of us are going to cover the following components. Cabin layout, location of vehicle switches, safety systems, fuel tank and AdBlue requirements, wheels and tyres, operator checks and servicing schedule, driving and more. The operator's manual is the best source for more detailed explanation of the Iveco's numerous functions and should be read after watching this video. The vehicle comes with a key set, two keys, a remote locking fob and code card. It's important to keep the code card in the vehicle and a copy in your home location to assist in emergency vehicle starting if the key is not recognised by the vehicle. The vehicle has a number of handhold positions to safely access the cabin while maintaining three points of contact. Front bucket seats have five user adjustments. Raise this lever for forward and aft adjustment of seat. Rotate this knob for back rest inclination. Using this lever, adjust the height of the seat. Moving the lever downwards lowers the seat, while moving it upwards raises the seat. By turning this lower side knob, the inclination of the seat cushion can be adjusted. Before entering the cab, check that the seat suspension adjustment is correct for your approximate weight. Minor adjustments can be made once seated to suit terrain or comfort. The steering wheel can be adjusted when the vehicle is stationary and the park brake on. Pull down on the lever to unlock and adjust the steering wheel in or out. Complete the adjustment by relocking the lever. Adjust the seat belt height so the belt lies between your neck and shoulder. Make sure the seat belt height adjuster returns to the locked position. To adjust external door mirrors, use the controls on the driver's door. The mirrors can be folded in when traversing tight tracks. To engage the handbrake, pull the lever up. To release, pull the lever up slightly and depress the button. Lower the lever fully into the rest position. Just remember, check that the light goes out. The cabin has a number of stowage compartments. In the upper dash, there is a driver's, centre and passenger's compartments, glove box and overhead parcel shelf, and in the doors, an upper and lower door pocket with a weight limit of 0.4 of a kilo. To start, insert the key into the ignition and check that the gearbox is in neutral. The clutch depress and handbrake is on. Rotate key momentarily to the second position until the engine starts. If the engine fails to start, it will be necessary to rotate the key back to the off position before attempting a restart. From the driver's seat, the left hand multifunction stalk operates the main lights and turn indicators. The daytime running lights automatically come on when the vehicle is on, but are switched off when the headlights are on. And now it's high beam. Adjustment of the headlight level up or down may be necessary to prevent excessive glare for oncoming traffic. Use the buttons here on the center console to adjust up or down. The right hand multifunction stalk controls the windscreen wipers and washers. The new Iveco Daily is fitted with automatic climate control as standard. Either set the desired temperature using the temperature ring control on the left, or it can be manually adjusted using the other controls. For more information on the climate control system, please read the operator's manual. The cruise controller is located on the left hand side of the column. Rotate the end bezel to turn on. To set road speed, push it down. One kilometre per hour speed adjustments can be made by pushing the lever either up or down as required. 
On the end of the wiper lever is the trip meter button. Depress the button to scroll through each trip meter screen. Hold to reset the data. For more information on how to use a trip meter and customize the multifunction display, please refer to the operator's menu. The new daily is fitted with power windows. The controls are located on the driver's door. The vehicle battery can be isolated from the cab using two buttons. You need to allow around three minutes for total isolation. The new daily has a single 90 litre diesel fuel tank. To access the filler cap, open the passenger door and lift this flap. The new model daily 4x4 is Euro 6 compliant. It meets the next level of emission standards. To reduce nitrous oxides, AdBlue is injected into the exhaust stream. AdBlue is a non-hazardous, non-toxic solution of urea and water. AdBlue is available from a fuel station bowser or from a sealed container with a dedicated funnel. The vehicle has a separate 25 litre AdBlue tank. To access the filler, open the driver's door and open this flap. The level of the AdBlue tank can be read from the instrument cluster. It is expected to use around 3 litres of AdBlue per every 100 litres of diesel. As a quick tip, the expiry date of AdBlue in containers should be checked before use. When the AdBlue begins to run low or run out or is contaminated, the vehicle will provide the driver a warning or potentially reduce engine power. The first warning occurs when the level of AdBlue falls below 10%. For more detailed information, please read the operator's manual. It is highly recommended the tank is topped up from a Bowser when the opportunity arises. Each vehicle comes supplied with a set of tyre changing tools. Refer to your user manual regarding the specific jacking points. Please note, to lower the spare wheel, the three bolts have to be loosened before lowering the winch. To tighten the wheel nuts, use a body weight of 70 kilograms in a diagonal sequence. And remember, after 50 kilometers, recheck the tension. If you see a fixed warning light, please drive carefully to a dealership. If you see a blinking light, park the vehicle up and call an Iveco dealership. Use the dipstick to check the level in the engine compartment. The oil level must be between the minimum and maximum reference marks on the dipstick. Visually check that the brake fluid is at the maximum level. If the level is low, contact your Iveco dealership. Visually check that the coolant level is between the maximum and minimum reference marks on the tank. Caution, don't open when hot. The windscreen washer bottle fill point is here. If the performance of the air conditioning system is poor, please check the condition of the cabin pollen filter to ensure it's not blocked. If the pollen filter is blocked, you'll have to have it replaced via an Iveco dealership. The vehicle battery is located under the driver's seat. To access it, you need to remove this panel. For jump starting, there's a remote positive terminal in this location. Please refer to a user manual for servicing schedule requirements. Depending on your application, it can range from 20,000 to 40,000 kilometers. The new Iveco Daily 4x4 has a number of safety features. I'm going to mention just a few of them for you. ABS, anti-lock braking system. ESP, electronic stability program. Rollover intervention. Electronic brake force distribution. Trailer sway mitigation and hill hold control. Daily 4x4 has a permanent four-wheel drive system for better traction on and off the road. One of the things I really love about this vehicle is the six-speed gearbox, and along with that, four transfer case ratios give you a total of 24 gears. And in this situation I'm in right now on a steep descent, I'm gonna choose low range, which will give me a final ratio of 100 to one in first gear down this steep descent. Great control. 
The transfer case low gear must only be used when maximum traction is required and only be engaged when the vehicle is stationary. The low gear can be used with half gear ratio engaged for a further gear ratio reduction. If driving around town fully loaded or even towing a trailer in the mountains and forestry roads where it's heavy going and you want to maintain a good road speed and RPM, you can do that with the mid-range gears. That's your green lever on the left side, you depress the clutch, maintain 1500 to 3000 RPM and you'll feel the engine RPM crease and you'll have better engine control. If you want to go back to your normal highway gears, again, remain in that 1500, 3000 RPM and pull that green lever back. In rough or rocky terrain in front of us right now, you can use the cruise control feature to maintain a smooth throttle control. You turn the cruise control on, push the button at the end once, and to increase RPM, you push the lever up, or decrease RPM, you bring the lever down. And it makes for a nice, smooth run through difficult terrain. When selecting reverse, lift up the collar and push it into reverse. One of the great things I love about this vehicle is the hill hold control. It takes that panic out of situation on a steep incline. If you have to get the clutch engaged and go away, relax. It'll hold the vehicle as you lift the brake for up to about two seconds. As you do that, it sits there, gives you time to take up the clutch and away you go. The hill can be as steep as you want and you've got full control. Your new Iveco Daily 4x4 is fitted with three diff locks. A centre diff lock, a rear diff lock and a front diff lock, numbered 1, 2, 3. They deactivate in reverse sequence, 3, 2, 1. Today I'm driving on a gravel road and I choose to activate the centre diff lock. For me, that gives me a 50-50 split between the front and rear axle. Also, remember when you do that, it deactivates the ABS and the stability control. But one thing it does do, it keeps the hill assist. After successful engagement of the front diff lock, a warning buzzer will continually sound to remind the driver that when the front diff lock is engaged, the steering is affected. When activating diff locks, remember, half a second for on, and to deactivate your diff locks, you hold for one second. The vehicle has a fording depth of 660 mil when crossing rivers or creeks, and it also, on the dash, you have a fan deactivation so if you're in deep water it doesn't push the fan back onto the radiator. The alarm will sound the whole time to remind you when exiting the water you turn it off. We hope you have learnt a lot about the new daily 4x4 to get the most from your driving experience. And I hope to see you soon in the Outback.